Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can combine multiple technologies to create an amazing offering for your clients and frankly, even catapult your business. We're taking a look at how 3D printing, uh, laser engraving, and also 3D scanning come together to expand your product offering. And in my opinion, catapult it to the next level. So take a look at these things here. All of the products that you see here, and we're gonna go through each one of them, have been created either on the K2 Plus color, or it's been on the Creality High, also leveraging color to create, again, compelling products. In addition to that, we've used the Creality Raptor Pro to scan certain products that allow us to create fixtures to rapidly expand and engrave as we're dealing with bulk orders. So if that's interesting to you, make sure you stick around because we're going to go over these products and hopefully you're going to get some ideas of how you can show up and stand out. Let's get right to it. Now, all of these products have been uh, created with uh, Creality products, and I just wanted to share with you how we've tied everything together. So first of all, uh, let's say that you want to use your laser engraver to be able to engrave something like this. It would be pretty easy to do this either on the Creality Falcon 2 Pro or on the new Creality A1 laser engraver, right? They're going to work easily. But if you want to engrave more than one, let's say, for example, you want to engrave two of them and you want both of them to be in the same spot and you want them to look perfectly aligned, what do you do? Well, that's where the Creality, let's say, uh, Raptor Pro comes in. What we do is we typically will scan an item like this to be able to create a fixture where all of these products are going to sit. So let me show you one of our fixtures. So here's a fixture. This is also printed on the uh, Creality. Actually, this is on the high. And we basically place the items that we're looking to engrave in a fixture like this. Now, once you've put them in this fixture, as I'm engraving, I can engrave three of them at the same time. I also have a fixture that works on the Creality Falcon uh, 2 Pro and also on the Creality A1 that allows me to put a number of these, like 12 of them at the same time. And if you are, for example, satisfying the needs to go to an open market, and you can see right here that I have a display, and you'll notice on that display, there's quite a few of these keychains. Imagine doing these one at a time and not being able to get them all to align perfectly. What we're doing here is by using this fixture, and putting this in one of the lasers, we're able to get the engraving done. We're able to get it in a way where it's consistent and everything aligns nicely. So that's what we're talking about here. The other thing that we'll do is, for example, in this case, uh, this is a new product that we had to prepare a fixture for. Uh, this is a belt buckle, right? So we needed to be able to engrave a belt buckle. Um, before I can engrave the belt buckle, again, I'd like to have consistency and I need to create a fixture. In order to create that fixture, I went ahead using the Creality Falcon uh, or in this case, the Creality Raptor Pro, I scanned this belt buckle on its side, and then I was able to create a fixture for it. Now, all I have to do is if I'm going to do, and actually we, we have an order of 50 of these, all I do is I place this in this fixture, just like this, and now I can put two at a time, six at a time, 12 at a time, depending on the laser that I'm using, and get all of these engraved, and all of them will be exactly in the same place, because that's what this fixture is going to do. So... When we're going to be engraving items, we use fixtures to be able to get that repeatability and that consistency. I hope that's the thing that you're getting there. And the way we do that is by we leverage here the Raptor Pro. You could do this also with some of the other scanners that Creality has. We scan these, we make a, a model, and then we're able to create these fixtures. What we then also do is we create a lot of items that we use for display. So for example, uh, these right here, uh, this one right here was created on the uh, Creality, uh, this is on the K2 Plus. So this is a wine stopper holder. It's a display that we use when we go to farmer's markets or any kind of markets where we're doing uh, some type of pop-up event. And you can see here, this is the, the cork itself, right? And we have them on display. Now you can have this on display as a house item, or you can have this on display for a sale item. This is very catchy. It brings it to people's attention. And this again was designed uh, and then printed on the uh, K2 Plus. Now we also deal with jewelry and on the side here you'll notice that I have a jewelry stand. This jewelry stand, I designed it as well. This was printed uh, using a dual color filament and this was created on the Creality High. And you'll notice here we have some angel numbers which are really popular. These sell incredibly well and we want to have this display. We want the, the, the table, the stand, wherever you're at to draw the eye. And as you see all these items right here, this is a very compelling view. We have some other stands that we've created. Uh, also, we do uh, sell a lot of coasters. Coasters that you can engrave easily. 
on any of the lasers that we made reference to here. So you can see uh, that coaster right there. And what we did is we created this coaster holder, right? This coaster holder was also 3D printed and it ties everything together. And again, it's really appealing. If we have this laying down, no one's gonna see it. People are gonna walk by. And then as you sell it and you give them a little extra piece right here to kind of showcase their purchase or to have it standing up in their home, it makes it look really nice. Uh, the last thing, and this wasn't a model that I created, but this was a, a, a model that's available on the marketplace, on the open market, is this one right here. So this is a nice carousel, especially if you're having keychains. So this was printed on the Creality High. Look how nice this works. Everything is pretty seamless here. Uh, and this was using, a, again, a dual color filament that makes it look like it's a, kind of like a little bit of wood and not, most people when they see our displays, they don't realize that they're 3D printed. They actually think that they're wood and painted or just wood itself. So I wanted to give you kind of like a sense and how all of these technologies come together to create a very compelling offering. Uh, it's not just about using, for example, a 3D printer on its own. It's not about using a laser on its own. And it's definitely not about just using a scanner on its own. Now, scanners like the Raptor Pro are absolutely fantastic and amazing, not just only to scan items like the ones that I'm doing here, but to do any kind of uh, vehicle refurbishing, um, part manufacturing, uh, but we enjoy using it for, for the items that you see right here. It really gives us a step ahead so that we can be consistent. So a lot going on in how you can combine laser engraving, 3D scanning, and 3D printing all in one. And okay. So that's a double okay. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing I wanted to give you a tease on is how I use the actual Creality Raptor Pro to scan. So I'm um, going to go ahead and just, uh, I'm going to use the default setting. So I'm going to have color mapping on. I'm going to disable the flat face and I'm going to leave the resolution. I'm going to bring this resolution down. So I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to bring that down to 0.25. Uh, color mapping, no, I don't need color. And then again, disable flat face, I'm going to say no. I'm just going to do the scan. Now, uh, what will happen here is we're going to see a couple things taking place. I'm going to go ahead and allow some of these settings to take place here. And I'm going to pull back a little bit. I have some markers here, you'll notice, and those markers are going to help with uh, my scanning process. Right? So I just want to make sure everything is coming up really good. It looks like it is. Let's go ahead and increase the, the brightness a little bit on this. All right, so you can see as I'm doing the scan on screen how the actual keychain is showing up. Now this is gonna be super duper forgiving uh, because I am using each one of those little dots, those reflective dots that you see on that tray. They're the things that are being captured or kind of keeping uh, the mapping in place. So as I just go over it, and I'm just moving, you know, you can see those little lines that are coming up right there. Um, I'll go ahead and bring the scanner back in view so you can see it. This is what I'm kind of doing at the very top. And I'm just uh, going over and capturing the actual pieces right there, right? Those little markers that I have, both uh, the 3D printed ones and the ones that are in the tray are kind of helping the actual scanner uh, maintain the coordinates of those items. And because this is a pretty straightforward item, you know, all I really need is one side, right? That's all I need. So we're gonna go ahead, go over a little bit more. You can see how I can capture some of that angle right there. Let's go back a little bit so we can get that. We get that right there. All right, I think that looks good for now. Let's see how much we got. That looks really good. So we've completed the scanning. And when we see it here, you can see on the bed, you know, it was scanned. You can see uh, pretty much that's what I want. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna reduce this resolution back to the 0.25, which is what I had. I'm not gonna mess with sensitivity because there's really not a lot here for me to worry about. And I'm gonna go ahead and process this. So this is gonna give me higher resolution. Um, and you'll see how oh, this becomes even more legible. You see that come up in a second. All right, that took a little bit. Let's see what this looks like. You can see how much better that looks. Ooh, that looks nice. 
All right, so now this looks a lot better. Look how nice and clean that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this. This is the next step. I can actually have them all done at once, but I just did them one step at a time. A couple of things I could do is I could get rid of the actual uh, base, right? I could do it inside of this software or I could do it in another piece of software. It's pretty much up to you. You probably wanna do it inside of the software, but for this illustration, I'm just showing you um, how quickly and easy it is to scan. Now, obviously, you know, when you look at this, I'm not really concerned about this because I don't really care about that piece. What I'm just grabbing is this piece right here, which is what I will use uh, when we create our jigs. Now, you'll notice that with the camera, you do get a really nice clear view of the items that you're working with. And I have a several things going on here that I want to share with you. First of all, I have some circles. And you see these circles right here. Now, I'm not planning on engraving any of these circles. These circles are here on a layer so that I can work with perfect alignment. Here I have my text, and if I go over here, you'll notice that I have, um, again, my settings up here in the top where I have my text. And then over here, this is just, these are just areas that I'm using for alignment of the text of the graphic I'm gonna put in the box. Let me show you how this is gonna work. I'm gonna do a copy and paste. I'm gonna grab this, bring it right here. And what the circle is doing for me, it's helping me with the alignment. Notice how it's kind of snapping into place. So I want that to be in the center because that circle is in place, it's gonna make it easier for it to recognize where it should be. And it makes it a lot easier when you're working with these alignments. Now, I have another magnetic base that basically has like a dozen of these. And basically it keeps the actual jig in its place. And then all I'm doing is replacing the wood. So that's something that I'll, you know, that we have that we'll use if we're gonna have a big job that we're running. But in this case, we're just doing this small one. So what I want you to see in a second though, is how this, the framing is gonna work, especially now that I have the jig in place. So what I'm gonna do is just to show you, I'm gonna choose this and I'm gonna choose frame. Now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the actual laser head go over this area and circle it. Let's see if that does what it's supposed to do. So I'm gonna hit frame and then you're gonna see it going into place and then you can see how it's going all the way around it. That's what I want to happen. Now, what I can do is I could possibly move this thing a little bit higher, just in case, um, because again, it's going just a little bit over. I can make that adjustment. But now let's go over here and I'm gonna frame this because I wanna see how that is aligned. And it's gonna go to that other one and you notice how it's framing it. And that is, that is spot on. That's exactly where I want it to be. So this is the benefit of having the actual camera, having the camera calibrated and then having your position um, on, that, uh, on that jig so that it's gonna go there and immediately engrave. Now I have it set to fill engrave and you could see it here. So here are the settings and, and I'm working with multiple layers. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna send this to engrave so that I can show you what the quality looks like or at least I can show you how I went about creating the actual keychains. Right, so the engraving process is pretty fast. And what I like about this laser is how dark the text comes out. Uh, it is crispy black. And so I'm using their standard setting. You'll notice here I have the basswood board, 300 by 300 by 15 millimeters. I just used uh, a little focus uh, chip, this one right here that you saw in the original video, uh, just to make sure that that was in place. And I do have an extractor. I'm doing this in my living room. Actually, this is my formal living room because again, just wanted to give you the sense that if you don't have a dedicated space, you can use any space to laser engrave, especially with the kind of extraction solution it has. Creality does have a filtration system. I'm not using that solution right now. I'm using another solution that I have, but what I like about the actual uh, Falcon A1 is that there's no smoke seeping outside of this. So I've looked at other solutions that basically smoke gets out of it. I'm not smelling anything, right? So I'm not smelling any leakage. Everything is going out through the exhaust and it's going into my filter without any problem. And again, this is gonna take a couple, a couple minutes to just engrave. It's actually 40 seconds in for that engrave. And you can see how nice and crisp this is coming out. I kind of love how easy it is, right? It's almost like making coffee. You just push the button, and as long as there's coffee in the machine, it's coming out. And in this case, as long as I have a product to engrave, and I have that jig in place, I'm gonna be able to crank these out 
pretty consistently. And that's what I love about jigs and I love about cameras and just aligning it the way you saw me align it. Look how nice that is. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Look at that. Isn't that crispy? Nice and crispy. Now the 3D printing process is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not going to go in through the, the CAD software or the design portion of that. That's something that you'll have to pick up um, and choose the CAD software of your choice. Uh, but printing is pretty simple. It's actually point and click. Um, all of the time is really spent on the design side. But this is going to give you a sense of the lasering side and how easy it is. And check that out. That is already done. That took a little bit over a minute to engrave. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.